We're joined now by Larry Kudlow, the director of the President's National Economic Council. Larry, good to have you here. I want to ask you, the president tweeted Saturday night about what's happening at ports of entry along the southern border, saying that traffic's going to be snarled and that there could be commercial delays. There's almost $2 billion in commerce that crosses this border uh, every day. How much of an impact is this going to have? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't think um, we're going to have an, an official shutdown. I think the president's been quite clear on that. He's seen some things on the Mexican side guarding their border in the south that he likes. So we seem to have some cooperation. Things may be improving slightly. It's an impossible situation. Um, all these people coming across, uh, what is it, 100,000 people now, illegals in the last month or so. It's got to be dealt with. The drug trafficking, the humanitarian problems, the economic problems, among other things. So we looked at this with great care, my colleague Kevin Hassett and I, and there are ways to protect the economics and commerce uh, if we went into that mode, which we're not. But you're talking moment. about a complete shutdown, which yeah. is not happening. Which I think is not happening. But these congestions we wanted to at protect the ports. freight and truck lanes right. if we could, and that is. But again, based on the president's view, uh, we're not going to go there a uh, whole hog. But for the congestion that the president said is happening, you know, that drove up prices of avocados, certain. Uh, consumer goods. Do you see an economic impact to any of this? No, n nothing significant at the moment. Nothing significant. Um, the worst case scenarios are off the table for the moment. When will. But I will say, I will add, people should take his. I mean, this is a key issue for him border mm -hmm. security, the wall, and so forth, immigration reform. And when he talks about getting tough, if he has to. Those 25% tariffs on Mexican produced autos you're that, referencing. You know, I, there. We're not there, but. People should take it quite seriously. Mexico should take it quite seriously. This is a major issue. This is, yes, drug trafficking and humanitarian. This is an economic issue, as you hinted at, and this is a national security issue, so they should take the president quite seriously. But on that threat of potentially putting tariffs on autos, doesn't this hurt the new NAFTA, the USMCA? That hasn't even passed yet, but you're leveraging threats against Mexico. Well, at the moment, I mean, again, the president has said... Um, National security, border security is a major priority. The United States cannot continue the way it's been Even continuing. if it comes down to compromising passage of the USMCA. Well, I mean, Canada and Mexico still have to prove it, too. I agree. Um, I think in the, wholeness, in the fullness of time, this will all be worked out, and it will not interfere with UMCA, USMCA. That's our hope in any event. But you do have to set priorities. Sometimes you've got to make tough, short-term trade-offs. I'm not expecting an interference, okay? And we are somewhat optimistic about a USMCA vote. It's a very important trade deal, pro-growth in the United States, autos, domestic content, new economy stuff is very important, uh, IP, IP rights and patents and so forth, financial services. Uh, Bob Lighthizer, our ambassador for trade, has done a fabulous job. It's great for blue-collar workers and farmers. We broke through on dairy. I mean, we'd really love to see a vote because uh, we think we can win that. Right. But I'm just saying um, USMCA is a very important priority. Can you get the USMCA past the Democratic-controlled House and into law before 2020? Well, look, I'm going to... It's more difficult. I agree. I'm going to play that from the optimistic side. Uh, Speaker Pelosi has been very good, very fair. Um, in fact, Bob Lighthizer addressed the Democratic conference. Um, the speaker let him do that. That was a terrific gesture. He's been meeting with individual groups. We believe we will get a vote. And if we get a vote, we will win. I don't want to put timing on it. It's completely up to her. But she's been quite cooperative so far. So I'm going to play this from the optim side. On China, f President says we're four weeks out from a possible epic trade deal with them. What has actually been agreed upon? Well, you know, all these negotiations, we just get closer and closer. It's really interesting. We made good headway last week when uh, Vice Premier Liu He was here. This coming week, there'll be a lot of teleconferencing among the top tier people to continue the discussions. We're closer than we ever have been before. A lot of very difficult topics for the first time are on the table and being resolved. I think that's terribly important. The talks have been productive. I think the president here, too, expressed, uh, I was in the room, uh, whatever, Thursday, guarded optimism, uh, maybe more than guarded optimism. So we're, we're gaining Chinese on Chinese say there's an IP agreement, intellectual property agreement. Is there? I can't go into details on this, but we've made great progress on the IP theft. 
We've made good progress on the um, force transfer of technology, on the ownership. There are issues outstanding, not least of which are going to be enforcement-related issues. But in each and every place, A, they've acknowledged their problems. That was a very big hurdle. And B, what wasn't on the table is on the table. And C, we're getting closer and closer. But Larry, the, the Fed, as you know, was supposed to be apolitical. Herman Cain, uh, former presidential candidate, the president says he wants to appoint him to the Federal Reserve Board. How is he qualified for that job? Well, you know, besides being a successful businessman, which is very important, you know, there was a time with the Fed. I started my career a long time ago at the New York Fed. In those days, you had farmers on the board, businessmen and women on the board, small bankers on. It wasn't all economists, economists okay? So that's one point. Second point, specifically, uh, Herman Cain, for many years, was on the board of the Kansas City Federal Reserve and Bank. more of a civic role. And, but the, well, you but saw these sexual he, harassment he allegations chairman, derailed wait, his presidential Before we get to that, he was chairman of the Kansas City Fed, and he is therefore intimately acquainted with Fed operations. And I want to make this generic point. People say this is political. I don't think it's political. There may be a policy difference. We believe, the president believes, you can have low unemployment, and a strong economy, as we are having, the numbers came out great on Friday, without inflation. Is he going to without pass Without inflation. Check? Well, look, he's being vetted by the White House. He'll be going through his hearings in the Senate Banking Committee. I, I, I'm not here to comment or litigate any of that. Uh, there are allegations out there, but there are lots of allegations in Washington that don't pan out. Well, they my, derailed his presidential bid. My principal point is he is qualified. He was the chairman of the Kansas City Fed. He knows a lot about the subject. All right. Larry Kudlow, always good to have you Thank here. Thank you, Margaret.